person with Iman, any man or woman who has Iman, belief. The person who has belief in his or her heart, who recites or has recited and believes in the kalima and accepts and affirms and has yaqeen, certainty in Allah Ta'ala's power, Allah's glory, Allah's azmat. If there's anybody who has no opposition to this and believes in this, then that person, if he believes that Allah is the greatest, the malik, the controller, the owner of the universe, he is the owner of rizq and sustenance, and he is in charge of the affairs of the universe, and he owns the universe and paradise and hellfire. There's no example that is similar to Allah. Nothing that has gone before us or will come after us. Allah Ta'ala is so great and he's our Rabb. And he is our God and we all have this aqidah, alhamdulillah. In this same way, in the same way, Nabi Akhir Zama, the final Prophet Muhammad, Imam Bul Anbiya, the, he went the the groom of Shabbi Miraj, the night of Miraj. That if we accept his greatness, his status, his maqam, his level, his rank, every one every person with iman accepts this that there's no greater human being or nabi or prophet or rasul than the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he was the head of the uh, anbiya the imam the anbiya the khatam al nabiyin the final prophet and the status that allah ta'ala has given to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he gave to nobody else he's the habib of allah the beloved of allah habib allah and in the hereafter he will give intercession and shifaat and he has the greatest rank amongst all men. And we all believe in this. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to Allah. And we believe in the glory of Allah, the power of Allah. The st- Allah is the Rabbul Alameen. And we believe in the status of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. But there's one thing that is very surprising. And um, you could say, you know, if you think about it, it's not good. That despite knowing all of this, despite believing all of what we've just discussed, we don't accept or believe or follow the hukams, the orders, the orders of Allah, Allah's hukam, we regularly practice against Allah Ta'ala's order. Allah Ta'ala gives emphasis on something or a hukam for something and we practice in opposition to that. To this extent that if we look at life and the whole of the world of Islam, the aqeedah, we have aqeedah. We say we have yaqeen in these points, in these principles of belief, every mu'min, mu'mina, every man, woman. So what is the reason that we disobey Allah Ta'ala's hukams, Allah's ahkams, Allah's orders? Why do we disobey? Why don't we implement? Look at, we believe in the status of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his greatness, but we don't imitate him, we don't follow him. What percentage of the ummah follows and obeys the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their daily lives? What percentage? We need to think about this. We need to think, and these are the two things upon which the decisions will be made in the akhirah, upon which a person will attain success. Look, something to ponder about. I'm not giving you a lecture, a speech. This point has come to my mind. I'm reflecting and analyzing myself. Though. What is this issue? Why does this go? That 99% are totally just away from the deen. There's no hukum that we can see that we're implementing in our lives the orders of Allah, the orders of the Prophet ﷺ. We do something, we leave something, we do what we want. And our homes are full of this. Our children are like this. The ummah is like this. The whole direction has changed. And we are satisfied. We are happy with this. Allah Ta'ala has said in the Quran, Hakim, not in one place, in many places, that when this nation comes to me, people will come like this to me. Allahu Akbar, that their faces, they will be burning due to the heat of fire, uh, the fire of Jahannam. Look, we're listening to this. Yes, we touch the Quran, we believe in the Quran, and then we don't know what Allah Ta'ala said inside the Quran. 
it does not descend into our hearts and minds. In a second, that we just do what we feel like. And this, whatever we see is benefit in the world, in the dunya, we run after. What a big point. Allah Ta'ala says, your face is due to the fire of hell. Your faces will have burnt. You'll be shrieking and screaming and Allah will then address us. That, did you not know in the world, in the dunya, when my verses were revealed, when my orders came and you used to reject them? Surah Mu'mini, Al-Mu'minun, you can re- read in various surahs. Well, now you're screaming? Allah will ask, what happened then at that time? At that time, why did you leave my orders? Why did you reject my orders? Why did you never accepted the Qur'an of Allah, the statements of the Prophet ﷺ, his orders? We didn't accept them. So what were we waiting for? Allah Ta'ala will ask us, now why are you screaming now? And this will be the person standing there on the banks of Jahannam. Then that person, he will be burning and he will say to Allah, غَلَبَتَ لَيْنَا شَكْوَةً He will say himself, that he will say himself this statement. And then he will say that we were the qawm of Dalin, oh my Rabb, my Lord, you are totally correct. You are totally correct. That we were those who were drowned in misfortune. Now this is a reality, that person will say this, that man, that woman, that person who lived his life or her life away from the orders of Allah, hakams of Allah, and let's not, I won't tell you that percentage, you can tell me the percentage yourself. You know we say, look how many people are in this country, population, percentage, census, why don't we do a census on the people, practice that we have a census, how many men, how many women, we differentiate, why don't we have a census, that how many, what's the percentage of those who follow the hakams of Allah, how many people, how many percentage of people are those who are following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so when we stand in the hereafter, Allah, that mis- Misfortune had surrounded us. Wretchedness had surrounded us. غَلَّبَتْ alayna shikwatuna, My Rabb. So if a person like this, whose life is not in accordance with Allah Ta'ala's ahkams, and they are lost in misfortune and dalala, and wretchedness, that what barakah will come to their life? What blessings will come to their life? What will be the hal? What will not be the hal? We need to think about this. What is our life? What is the basis of our life? And, and, that those people, Allah Ta'ala has given us a selected life, a selected amount of time. If we live a whole life like this, if we turn back 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, we pass 60 years, if we pass like this in disobedience, and whatever we felt like doing, we did. Whatever we didn't like, feel like doing, we did. We took the Quran, we kissed it, we put it on the shelf, we listened to the ulama, we go to Juma prayer, and Juma bayans, and lectures, and Thursday night majalis, and dhikr majalis, and the words of people, but our lives are still the same. Still the same rejection, still the same option. We don't even know what Allah Ta'ala has told us to refrain from, what Allah Ta'ala told us to leave, what we have to do in obedience to the Prophet Muhammad And this is the whole game. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We promise to Allah. Is this the right thing or am I saying wrong? That I'm just giving you a thinking, presenting a thought process, a framework of life. And the whole ummah, let's have a look now. Let's analyze the ummah today. That today we have a big vast world, we have internet, you're sitting on the net and you can see the whole world in front of you. Press the button, you can read the history of this world, this country, this is the pe- this country, this many Muslims, non-Muslims, Muslims are here, they are there, and Muslims are doing these actions today, the news and this and that, punishments and decrees, etc. So is this not something we have to think about? That what is the reason for this? There has to be a reason for this. That we believe in Allah, we believe in Allah Ta'ala's greatness. He's the Malik and the Khaliq and the Akbar and He is the greatest. But we don't believe in His orders. We don't accept His orders. Does this make sense? Now if we take in a comparison to this, you work in an office, you have a boss, your immediate boss. And you will listen to everything your boss says. Everything he says. Wherever, if you're in the office, you enter into the office, you sit on the table and His order comes. His file will open. Is this the case or not? Tell me, I have not done this, I don't do this because I have no link with a employment in an office, but this is the situation. That you will have to listen to the boss as long as you are the employee, you're in the office, you're sat open this file, do this action, file these papers, send this document, email this document. Has it ever happened the employee says, no, I believe in you as the boss, you are my boss, but I'm not going to listen to your orders, I'm going to do what I feel like today. Well, until today, show me an example of an employee like this, any small example. You have a boss, 
You're sitting in the office, he's your employer, and he says, what's happening? He says, no, I'm going to do what I feel like today. I'm sitting in your office, I'll drink tea when I want, I'll work when I want, I'll go on lunch break when I want, I'll have a tea break when I want, I'll do what I want. He says, okay, fine, just wait until the evening, and then you won't be here on your desk after today. And the true Malik, Malik Hakiki, due to whom we are living our lives in the world, are we not going to die? Are we not going to die? Read this verse, Allah Ta'ala says, then either this will be your consequence, and what a bad consequence, Allahu Akbar. What a bad consequence. Oh, oh, this is Thursday night. Thursday night. And Monday and Thursday. What happens? Oh, the whole ummah, the whole nation of the Muslimin, their deeds are presented where? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where? In the court of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The whole ummah. The whole nation, wherever Ummah is, it can be on the Jazeera, on an island, in a remote, three men may be on an island, in a remote corner of the world, and their Ummah is, even their deeds, totally, the whole book of deeds, their accounts, the pious predecessors have stated, the Jamal Hisab is presented to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu on which days? Monday and Thursday. Monday and Thursday. And there's, it's not that they, uh, that they are not aware of the dunya, what's happening even now, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi knows about the Ummah, the state of the ummah now, today he knows. Until the day of judgment, he will know the state of the ummah and what is happening. So tell me, what is our life? What are our lives? How do we present ourselves on those days to Nabi Sallallahu Do we want to live a life like this of negligence? That we break the hakams of Allah? Oh, life will pass, life will pass. Yes, Allah gives everybody bread and dogs and cats. Everybody eats. Everything eats. The whole of the food mats are spread out around the world. And this is not the objective of life, eating and drinking. Really, we need to prepare for that time when our last breath comes out of our body at the time of death. And what has shaitan done mentally? He has made that manzil, that destination very far away. Oh, death is so far away, says shaitan. Don't know when I'm going to die. Oh, there are many medicines and cures and solutions. Oh, even if a man's 80, 90 years old, even now, he says, I've got a lot of time left in the world. A lot of time left. This concept that shaitan has given to us, such a concept he's given to us, that he deceives us. He doesn't even let us think that we're going to die. Shaitan. And about whom? That we don't know that moth is going to come. And Shaitan, that we see a man has died in his youth, in the middle age, or 20 years, or 40 years, 60 years from every country. But Shaitan has made death so far from us, so far, that even if I'm retired and I'm hobbling and coughing and spluttering, the point does not come into my mind that I'm going to die. I don't even imagine that I'm going to die. The thought doesn't even come into my mind. That in the day, you just think, how many times do me and you think about death? How many times? Think. I haven't even thought today. I probably didn't think tomorrow. I won't think tomorrow. Even if a janazah comes in front of me, then I'll quickly just look at the janazah and run away. Oh, I'm not going to the graveyard either. So the pure, the reason that we need to think it is that shaitan has put a veil in front of reality. He's put a veil in front of reality. We're going to die. We're going to the brothers. Let's wake up, wake up. This is dangerous. The whole ummah is in danger. The whole of in danger. Let's not live our, we don't live our lives as the way Allah wants us to. We have our own dunya, we're immersed in our own dunya, our enjoyment. Thus, we open the Quran according to our desire, we kiss it, put it away, we pray salah according to our own desire, we do what we want in the day. Doesn't matter who says to us, we listen to bayan, lectures, wise, doesn't make any difference to us. What a big verse of the Quran. And if I say that this verse has come down for me, has been revealed for me. If Allah forgives, that if I'm burning in Jahannam and my fire will be burnt in the fire, and I will look towards my deeds, it's me. It's me that this verse is speaking about. That in my life, what have I got to my name? I speak about myself. How many orders of Allah do I break in the day? Life, forget about life. Let's talk about one day. So don't I think that this verse is for me? Is this verse of Quran of me? That how much of my life is obedience to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Let me think. Why should I say that this verse is for that person, this other nation, these other peoples? No. This verse is for me. That this verse that's been revealed is directly for me. It's totally for me. 100% has been revealed for me. For me. And these ahkams that I break. And this is the hukum Allah Ta'ala has given to us, His order. And this is the reason of going into Jahannam. Whatever the reason is there, that person will go into Al-Fire who has rejected Allah Ta'ala's orders, lived his life enjoying, following his nafs and desires. That person will go into the fire. There's a very ajeeb basis of today's discussion, a very ajeeb point that's come to my mind and heart. Beautiful. That we need to learn from. Now what will be our hashir? What will happen to us in the hereafter? What will be a hal? We'll say, oh, the people of hellfire will say, oh, that what kind of people are you? 
Amazing that we didn't even believe in Allah, we didn't recognize Him, we didn't accept Him. How did you come into hellfire? What kind of people are you? You had Qurans in your homes, you had masjids and bayans and speeches and scholars who spoke to you, the muhaddithin, the ulama, and they used to explain to you, and you still, how did you reach up? How did you reach into hellfire? They'll ask us, you are wretched in the world. They'll say, we were wretched. We didn't have humans. Even then you became wretched in the hereafter and fell into the hellfire. What's the reason for this? What answer will we give at that time? And the whole Qur'an gives us this subject. And don't think that if I don't think this, if you don't think that this verse is for me, because if we don't think this verse is for me, they will say, who is this for? Who is Allah Ta'ala speaking to in the Qur'an? Allah Ta'ala speaks to those who read the Qur'an. Who read the Qur'an. Now if the Qur'an is verse is explaining this point to us, then this verse is for me. If I'm sitting here and talking, and those brothers who are listening, this verse is for those people. Every man needs to look into his life, into his heart, and say that two hukums of Allah, that obey Allah and obey Rasul. Follow Allah and follow Rasul Sallam. What is our life? How much do we follow our desires? And how much do we follow Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Rather the hukum is that these two orders, the Allah Ta'ala, the owner of the universe, Allah, the master of the universe, the control of the universe. How can we dare that one hukum of Allah's, one order, and we reject, and I reject, and you've seen the game of this in the world that Allah Ta'ala is showing today. Allah Ta'ala has made us wretched and cursed and a laughing stock. A laughing stock. Not this that we'll do so many mistakes and I will punish Allah's justice. Is this that you are my servant? How did you carry out this one rejection in your life? How did you once disobey me? Once. And this is the basis of the person of Iman. That after believing in me, you have broken one order of mine, Allah Ta'ala says. One order. And you followed your nafs and desires in opposition to Allah Ta'ala's decree. Allah Ta'ala says, but you had one second in your life that you rejected the son of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You left his tariqah. You left his method. This time will come tomorrow. Judgment day will come, brothers. The iqtarbu ishabahu. Allah says in the Quran, very soon the day of accounting will come very quickly and on that day every single every single deed Allah Ta'ala will account for everyone will be stood there every man and woman will be stood there the questions will be asked the questions will be asked and the answers will be given Allah will be in his jalal at that time Allah very harsh day very harsh day if only we understand today we have time we have time if only we understand because tomorrow the time will be very severe very severe indeed. Death is close and shaitan's biggest deception to us. That you are going to die after a long time. And he makes us scared of hunger, poverty. What will happen tomorrow? Treasure chest full and fridges and fridges full of food and our wardrobe full of clothes. What will happen tomorrow? But we don't see at our deeds that what will happen tomorrow on the day of judgment. That what is up? If I die tomorrow, how will I stand on the day of judgment and answer for my deeds? There's a reason for this. What's the reason for this? That either we're mad and stupid and foolish, the whole ummah is stupid and thick. No, we're very brainy. We know how to earn. We have intellect and brain power very fast. From morning we start working. And you can ask us to do any occupation and work. We know how to make money. Like to the open uh, meat shops and vegetable shops and green grocery shops and warehouses and businesses and companies and structures and formations of companies. But we don't understand one basic principle that we have to, we have to accept the order of Allah and follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our lives. And these words don't permeate our brains and our hearts. They don't. So should we bring this into our lives or not? Yes or no? So let's think of a method. That what's the reason? Let's think of the reason, the root cause that we are not doing this. And if Allah Ta'ala gives us the cure, then will we implement the cure? Say loudly, inshallah. Loudly. That this is an important situation. That we don't want to die like this. Allah, please don't give us death like this. Allah, please don't give us death like this. Allah, we want a good death. We don't want to leave this world as your disobedient. Uh, disobedient. We want to leave this world as those people who obeyed you, Allah, and who obeyed the Prophet Muhammad. Allah, save us from the life of disobedience. Allah, save us. Maybe today, this little point that is coming out of my mind about the Quran and the Hadith, may Allah make our lives today. Allah Ta'ala's glory and power is such that today, as I said, this is the night of Jummah. Thursday night, the deeds are presented to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and when our amal will be presented, every deed is presented. Me and you, when our deeds are presented, then if you stated that these were those who do dhikr and they all did tawbah today, they all repented. What a great, great achievement! How imagine the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be so happy? You say this whole jamaat did tawbah, and the angels say, "Ya Rasul they all did tawbah. That all the previous sins forgiven, and a new lease of life." 
If you understand what I'm saying today, if I understand, if we understand, my brothers, that we need to do this action, we'll do this, won't we? Say, inshallah, yes. Then a new life will start, and everything before this will be forgiven. That we didn't know, we were ignorant, and today we've done ghawr and fiqh, and we understand, and after today a new life will start. That Allah is very qareeb, very close, very kareem as well, and especially, especially the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad He is very merciful to the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Very merciful. The Allah's rahmah seeks excuses that how do I take this person out of the hellfire and deliver this person to paradise. I don't even want the wind of hellfire to come close to this person. I don't even want them to have problems and issues on the day of judgment and hashr, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the ummah of my beloved Prophet Muhammad This is our status. We have so many cards that we can play, that we can utilize to attain success. We have many uh, tools that we can use to bargain for the rata. We need to understand the point. That let's look back in our lives, 50 years, 40 years. If we see, we cannot see nothing in our life that we have done. So now let's plan ahead. We don't know how long is left. We had this life that passed before us 30 years, 25 years. We've passed them. We wasted them. We forgot our objective. But now, let's look back. If a person has a thought that Allah did this ibadah, I did this worship, then I'll tell you this up today that how will we discuss and the day of judgment. Let's listen to this. It's sad. Our heart is being split due to sadness. There's darkness and loss. But I'm sad with my friends. And I've got an opportunity to seek for forgiveness myself. And Tawbah. And today is the night of Jummah. Inshallah, we'll all do Tawbah to Allah. Otherwise, we're in a very severe situation. If I look back today, based on the platform today, the point I'm about to make to you today, then even our ibadah will be floating in the air. The Hajj, the Umrah will be wandering around without any guarantee of success. There's no status of Hadith. The position we are in. We, had, we should be ashamed, we should be shaking, sweating, sweating. That Maghrib time, I was in a very bad situation, I tell you the truth, very bad situation. So my brothers, what's the reason for this? There's a reason for this. Allah has be, Sallallahu Alaihi taught us a dua for this. Beautiful duas, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught dua masura that he taught us, and from them duas, there's one dua. Allahumma ini a'udhu bika qaswatun wa ghaflatan. That... The, this whole sketch has been put in Oh Allah, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that do this dua to Allah. Oh Allah, Allah give us what save us from? Save us from ghaflat, negligence, ignorance, laziness. See this point, what a big thing is ghaflat. That the whole of our life and the consequence of sin, and the reason of sin, that despite believing in Allah, have I told you? Have I not explained? That we have yaqeen, we totally believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Totally, we have iman. As I said, we've got everything. But, but the sins that we commit, the sins we commit, we don't believe in Allah. What's the reason for this? What's the reason? Ghaflat, negligence. Negligence. I'll give you the proof, proof right now. You will say that I'm just speaking without any basis. I'll give the proof that due to ignorance and negligence, we live our lives. What a bad thing. Have we ever thought what is ghaflat? What is negligence, ignorance? Listen now, I'm giving you the proof. The whole ummah, what will destroy us? What will? Ghaflat. It will fill up Jahannam, hellfire. What? Ghaflat. Ignorance. Negligence. Now let me explain to you, I'll give the dalil that how this occurs. Very beautiful point. Let's understand this point. The man goes to sleep. We all sleep, don't we? Inshallah. Two hours, four hours, however many hours Allah gives tawfiq. We go to sleep, we're tired. Then you feel more sleepy, you snore. And the person sleeps with ease, Allah Ta'ala's ni'mah. And you feel sleepy and you go to sleep, isn't it? Now you're sleeping and I'm sleeping. And by chance, by chance, that this country's prime minister, I don't know the name, the prime minister, and he passes by your house and says, who lives here? This man, okay, let's meet this person. And you're sleeping on your bed. And the prime minister comes, the person, I am the prime minister. And you think that um, uh, I want to meet this person, I want to speak to this person who lives there. The person has a statement, isn't it? Protocol, the prime minister with the um, group. At that time I'm sleeping. No, he says, okay, wait, let me see. And he comes upstairs and you're sleeping in the bed. And then he stands there. Who stood there? Say it loudly. Do you understand what I'm saying? The point, the wazir azam, the prime minister stood and you're sleeping. Five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. And you are tossing and turning and sleeping, and you're snoring, and your hands going, hey, and you're sleeping. You know, people like sleep, somebody's nose and somebody's ears, somebody's poking his fingers in the ears and moving their hands and sleeping. Unconscious, 15, 20 minutes, the prime minister stood there, stood there, stood there, stood there. And then after going, says that this person's sleeping. And say, give my salam, I've gone. I have to go. So the prime minister or some big minister or some very big personality in the world is stood there. 
a big status and recognition. And let's say there's Shaykh Al-Adis now, Islamically, very great alim or scholar or wali of Allah. And they've come to you, they want to meet you next to your bed, your pillow, and you're sleeping. And then you realize afterwards, you'll realize, won't you? Won't you? Will you not get the news? Or you didn't know that you were sleeping and moving about? Fine. So when, for example, you are waking, you're awake, do you know the status when you're awake that this is a big alim or scholar or wali or this individual, the prime minister, you believe. But when you're asleep, you are you don't know that person's there, you are doing what you're doing, sleeping. Why? Because you are ghafil at that time. You are unconscious. You are ignorant at that time. Sleeping, you're asleep. You did not respond to such a great personality who stood next to your bed. When your eyes open, and they'll say, do you know you were sleeping? What happened? What? The 15 minutes next to your pillow, this person, huh? They're waiting. How? How did that happen? I didn't know. Why didn't you wake me up? And the, 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 the prime minister was there, or this alim was there, and you'll be sweating. You say that, no. He said, give my salam. Oh, oh, then you'll be regretting. If only I woke up and met that person and spoke to the person, isn't it? You'll be, do you understand that feeling now, emotion that I'm explaining, describing? So now we believe in Allah. We believe in the greatness of Allah, Rasulullah, Allah, the Prophet of Allah. But what? Because we are immersed and drowned in ignorance and sleep. And consciousness, then the akams, the orders of the Quran keep on coming, and close to us there's zero value because we are ghafil. We are asleep. Everything that's happening in our life today is because we are ghafil. We are asleep. We are not living a proper life. We are not awake. We're not awake. We don't know what the Quran is saying. What is the order of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So what we realize, the whole qawm, the whole nation of the Muslims, which is immersed in sin, one sin or many sins, what are those human beings? They are ghafil. They are asleep. Do you understand my delete? Do you understand my proof now? Is this honesty or not? Truth or not? That as long as a person is ignorant and asleep, he cannot understand the truth and the reality of anything that surrounds him. So at, in effect, at this moment in time, we are drowsy. We have been given, you can say, intoxication, that we are asleep. We don't understand the orders of Allah. We listen. Maybe we accept, but we don't implement. They have no effect on us because we are in a trance we are in a trance. A magic spell has overcome us. And this will make us drown on the day of judgment and thereafter. So one point has become very clear. That when a person commits a sin, when a person commits a sin and disobeys Allah, and Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnah, he, um, he doesn't accept it and he rejects it, he or she, that person is not awake at that time, that person is a ghafil and is living a life of ghaflat. And with ease we'll say that this person is living a life of, uh, of a ghafil, and he's not awake. And if he was to be awake, the Allah Ta'ala is closer to us than his jugular, than our jugular veins. A mu'min, we, we could not recognize Allah, because we're ignorant and sleep, but today is clo- Allah is closer to us than our jugular veins. But the nafs and shaitan has made us so ghafil that we cannot even recognize our Lord, Allah. But Allah Ta'ala says that what is the relationship between me and you is that you are seeing me and I'm seeing you. It is like Mi'raj and Astaghfirullah. We think this is a drama. This is our relationship with Allah. Allah Ta'ala says that me and you, my relationship with you is what? That I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. Than your jugular vein. Allah Ta'ala is explaining that always I'm with you. I'm always with you. Every second I'm with you. And what do we know? Until today, have we realized that Allah Ta'ala is with us? Or do we know that Allah Ta'ala is closer to us than our jugular veins? No, because we are living the life of ghafrat. We are asleep, tossing and turning the minister. The minister is there, the prime minister or the wali or the scholar. We're tossing and turning, hitting our hands. Together. We eat and drink according to our wills. We do haram and lie and backbite and slander and do haram. Do what we want. We do what we want because we are asleep. And now, let's listen further. All the salah that we will pray, all the ibadat that we will do, alongside with the sins, what will it be? It will be in the condition of the ghafil, the ghafil. So let's look at the situation of our deeds. That if we are sinning in our lives and we are worshipping at the same time, and when do we sin? We are sinning and parallel we're doing deeds. When does a person sin? A person sins because he's a ghafil, he's asleep. And all the ibadat that you do while you are ghafil are all in the state of ghaflat, negligence, ignorance. And what will happen to the deeds that are implemented in the state of ignorance? The Quran and the deed tell us they will be rejected and thrown back in our faces. So if we are sinning in our lives, I've done hajj and umrah, recited Quran, talawad, Ramadan, whatever I've done. Whatever, such big chances Allah has given to us. But I keep sinning, I keep sinning, I keep breaking Allah's laws and His rules. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah, I, 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 I break it, I reject it, and I'm happy. I've done ibadat, but I do all of the deeds in parallel of sinning. Remember, the ghafil will sin. And the person who's sinning, he's a ghafil. And the ghafil, every one of his deeds is in parallel, will be in the ghafil, and they will not be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
You want to be accepted. Very easy point we can understand today if we want to change and improve, then it's a very great opportunity. Then either we'll do what will be the consequence, what the Quran says, and then in Jahannam Allah will ask the questions and the answers will come from us in Jahannam. So what we realize, my friends, is that we need to wake up from the state of ghaflat, negligence, ignorance and being asleep. We wake up, we become conscious, we rub our eyes, we need to realize what the Quran is telling us and what is Allah Ta'ala's hukam. And then when the fear will come, we say, oh, such a great person's with me. What what was the hal then when your eyes open? When your eyes open, what is the hal? At that time my eyes open, that this man is standing and you put your hands together, you kiss, uh, you say you shake hands and embrace and set your bed properly and give tea and refreshments. So when our eyes will open and we'll see Allah Ta'ala, the haqiqat of our Rabb, then we say, bas alhamdulillah, the sea and the ocean of my refer, we start swimming inside this. That's it. That life and then sins in life after that. And this is what we call marifat and irfan. Nain is to Allah and the light and nur and feeding of iman. True thing on this is the meaning of Marifa. You know, we give the title to someone, Arif Billah. This is not some title. This is reality that person feels. Because that person has made himself wake up so much, made himself wake up so much that he becomes an Arif. He knows that Allah is very close to him. He feels that Allah is close to him or her. And the reason for being having the Qurb of Allah is that Allah, I can see you. Allah, I can see you. And we, we are just carrying on all our daily lives. Allah says, I am watching you. I'm watching you. And what do we say? We're in front of Allah. Allah is watching us. And we carry on disobeying Allah, committing the sins. So what does this mean? What does this mean? That totally our iman is at bottom, bottom point. We have no khawf, no fear. And when a person wakes up and understands the reality that Allah is there watching him or her, Allah is closer than the juggler vein, closer than that prime minister or that minister or that scholar who's sitting next to his bed, then will that person take his hands towards sin? Will he sit in the night and look at haram? Will he eat haram? Will he lie? Will he have taqabr? Will he have pride? Will he say, Allah, I don't accept your orders? All of the sins, all of the dark actions we do within us, our batin, our inner sins and diseases, will they come? When we extract them, when we see that we have Allah Ta'ala's khawf and fear, we are afraid of Allah, and then we will be no name of sin in our lives, totally free and clean and pure inside. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala says, then you will have an azim relationship with me, a great relationship with me. And this is what the human being needs to attain. One effort we need to make, one effort. What is that? We need to wake up from the state of sleep, the trance that we're in. We need to wake up from this and... We need, if we consider that we are ghafil, we need to say, ask ourselves, am I awake or am I asleep? Very easy criteria to understand. If you're sinning, then you will know that you are asleep. There's no magic solution that am I asleep or am I awake? How do I determine this? If I'm sinning, then I'm asleep and I'm a total ghafil. One sin, if my hand is going to the sin, take one sin in the day. Don't think, oh, I've done this worship, I've been to the masjid, I've just prayed. This is not the basis of a Muslim, the right of a Muslim to disobey Allah, even one sin. Don't ever even think, that, oh Allah, I've prayed today, I've done your dhikr remembrance, oh, I can do this one sin. It is not the right of a mu'min to do this. Remember, if a mu'min is worshipping, and in parallel to that he's sinning, then we have no right to do this, then that person is a ghafil. And I'm talking intellectually at the moment. A person who's a ghafil, who's a sinner, and he's doing ibadah, no, it's Allah's choice. He is Qadir and Mutalik, he is Ghafoor or Rahim, that he can fill up the whole of the Jannah with the Mu'mineen and take all of the disbelievers out and send them to paradise. But the Sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he does not like the Ghafil, the ignorant person. So ibadat and Salah and prayer and worship, we need to wake up and do these actions. That's why Allah Ta'ala is saying in the Quran, in the Quran, that don't pray a Salah that you are asleep. No, is Allah Ta'ala not said this in the Quran? So what does this mean? That why do you pray salah when you are ghafil? That if you want to pray salah, then pray salah that in your prostration you feel my qurb, Allah says. My prostration, I've said, that prostration is mihraj, and I will see you. How many times do you do sajda from morning until night, and through the night, you have mihrabs and the sign of prostration in your foreheads, and I've made you do sajda in the Kaaba, Masjid Nabwi, Bayt al-Maqdis, in the whole world, in Haram Sharif in Makkah, and next to your sheikh, next to your teachers, in masjids, in madrasas, institutes, and in one of your sajdas, have you seen Allah? Have you felt Allah is close to you? Why? Because you are the ghafil. Because you are negligent, you are asleep. Allah says the basis of prostration is what? That you put your head into prostration and you should be close to your Lord. You should feel it. See, and where has this basis gone? Right, uh, uh, me and you not Muslims? Are uh, we not reciting kalama? Do we not believe in Allah? 
We say we are Muslims. We say La ilaha illallah. First and foremost, I will have a halal shop. I'll say, where's the halal meat shop? Halal roasters and chickens and halal foods and halal, halal and halal. We so much run after halal. And here, we are awake with regards to halal food. The things we like, our eyes are open. Our eyes open. Morning prayer, masjid's empty. Can't see anybody. Masjid's empty. Allah Ta'ala's dhikr majlis, can't see anybody. Everybody's away. Imagine. Masjid is full. Is it? No one's there. Now, eat salah and you won't get one square inch of space. Everyone, oh, masjid extended. We need a bigger masjid. Thousands of announcements. We need a masjid bigger. For one day, if the masjid's full, we say extended, make it bigger. Just for an hour, people are there, 10-15 minutes for eat salah. The rest of the year, as soon as salah finishes, the Ramadan's gone. Four, five old men splattering and coughing in the front row. Hobbling. Uh, where he's coughing, that person's coughing and the masjid's empty. No one's there. This is our deen. This is our iman. That Allah Ta'ala does He not order that in the morning run to the masjid to pray salah. Somebody's on the prayer in his bed on his mattress lying down on the carpet. In this hall we will leave the world. A very bad situation my friends. Sins upon sins upon disobedience of Allah. Massive scale. Massive scale. Two things we need to take hold of. Very essential for us. Allah's hukam and the hukam of Rasul should be in our life. But they're away from our life. There's no life without these two things. There's no life. So let's make this, the scenario, the state of ghaflat away from us. We need to take ignorance away from us. When we wake up and consciousness comes, then we will start to be aware that our Lord is next to us. Our Lord is, though I was asleep, how do I then remove the state of sleep that away from me? I have to get up in the morning, I'm tired. So when you want to wake up in the morning, you prepare to stay awake, don't you? Or to wake up. We do something, don't you, to wake up? You have an alarm clock. We have an alarm system today, isn't it? A telephone, we set the alarm. I want to pray to Hajjud. What do you do? You said the alarm clock. So if you're in a state of sleep or a trance, then there's a solution to wake up, isn't it? We utilize something. So if we're asleep, we use an alarm clock, tell somebody to wake us up, etc. So in the same way, we set the alarm clock and we want to wake up from the sleep so we can do our work in the day. So there must be a method to wake up from the state of ghaflat that we're in now. Say subhanAllah loudly, loudly, because the cure is coming close. Cure. A person's asleep in life, let's say he needs to wake up to go to work tomorrow. What does he do? He sets the alarm clock. So now me and you are asleep. We are the ghafil. We are asleep with respect to the hereafter. Don't we want to wake up? So what's the alarm clock? وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ That's it. That's it. Subhanallah. Allah's solution. وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ Allah Ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ If you want to go into paradise, now we understand dhikr. Then set the alarm clock of dhikr, then all of your ghaflat in your life will disappear, vanish within a second. And that's why we do dhikr, the walis of Allah. Not to become a wali of Allah, or a sheikh, or to make your ru or to call the jinnad, and uh, Qahazar Abdul Qadir Jal- Jalani is coming, and his ru is coming, and I'm floating there. This is not the drama. The reason we do dhikr of Allah, the pious predecessors who took out of dhikr in their life, read this verse, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا لَعَلَّكُمْ Allah Ta'ala doesn't say that do dhikr because I want to start flying and floating and dreams and visions and become a kutab and a, and a, and a ghawth. No. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِهُونَ Do dhikr for this reason. Wake up, recognize Allah and walk into paradise. And when a person, tuflihun, when he comes into the group of the tuflihun, what alarm clock will make him become this? Dhikr Allah. Remembrance of Allah. Allah Ta'ala says tuflihun. When you become tuflihun, وَذْكُرُوا Allah. Do dhikr kathira and kathira. Then your eyes will open. Oh, oh, then he rubs his eyes. When he rubs his eyes, he says, Allah Akbar. Allah's glory, he sees Allah's glory and attributes and Allah's greatness and he looks around the world. Suddenly he goes into prostration. Allahu Akbar. Suddenly. This is dhikr. This is such an alarm clock. Such that you're asleep and the alarm, it, 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 it starts... Um, Making the noise, you suddenly spring up onto your bed. And you go into wudu. In the same way, dhikr of Allah makes a person wake up and he gets close to Allah suddenly. And he starts to recognize the greatness of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He starts to practice the sunnah on everything. The kala, form, appearance, libas, itad, the eating, drinking, ibadah, worship. Every action is in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. That's why he said from top to bottom, every hair to top to toe, the person is immersed in the, the kala of the Prophet Muhammad no showing off, no pride, fitrat and natural. His life becomes that he wants to follow the not to show people he's got a mama or he's changed his appearance or clothes. No, his tabiat, his lifestyle, his mizaj, his thinking. He cannot think that in my life at any time that I do wrong in opposition to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu lifestyle. He doesn't want pride or haughtiness. Because remember Allah Ta'ala says that even one dot 
of non-ikhlas comes onto your heart, one dot of pride, then the consequence of that will be very severe. Allah says that your whole deen, mukhlisu lahu deen, there should not be one dot of pride where you're showing your deen to other people for the sake of showing off. Everything should be for Allah. As a person wakes up, goes far from being a ghafil, he does more dhikr of Allah, his eyes open, his heart opens, karamat, and Allah Ta'ala will give him the reality of deen and he will, he will bow in front of Allah, this is haram, this is haram, this is wrong. And his whole world, the whole world can go to one side and do haram and doesn't implement what he's doing. But alhamdulillah, one weak woman or weak man, they will run to Allah and implement that deed and they won't be afraid or ashamed because they can see their Rabb. He or she will see his Rabb. Allah is watching me, how can I do this action? How can I do this? Allah Akbar, where's that person gone? Why is he not practicing? Where's Allah gone today? Why don't we implement the deeds? So the sin is implemented at that time when a person has not set the alarm clock. The alarm doesn't go off, nor do we then press the button, we don't know about sunnah, sharia, deen. We're just following, we go for taweez, then we go to this wali, ask for taweez, ask him to do dua for me, ask this person to write this script for me. Allah says, then you become like an idol, uh, an idol worshipper. You run after individuals, you forget Allah, you forget the Qur'an, you start worshipping people, believing that people give you solutions, you start prostrating to human beings. Oh, this man, he's, he's very successful. Oh, he's reached the heights. Let me go to this person and ask for dua. So such excuses we seek to get solutions for our desires in the world. We don't want to leave haram. And with haram, then we start to live in the world and we want ease with haram in the world. How can this be? Allah says, I give chapati and bread to the dogs. This is not the success criteria. Dunya, money, wealth, bank accounts. This is not the success criteria. The disobedient people, the gangsters, the criminals, the sinners, they will get money. They will go wealth and cars and houses and the dogs and the cats, they eat and the animals. Allah says, I'm Rabbul Alameen. I will give food and sustenance to everyone. What I want to see that who is benefiting from their life. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ We ourselves are saying to Allah, Allah, that we are immersed and drowned in darkness and we've destroyed our lives with our own hands. Allah, if you didn't give us tawfiq to do dhikr, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْنَا What would be Allah hal? If you did not give us your fadl, blessings, if you didn't give us your alarm clock and Abraham on us, then we would have gone into hellfire most definitely. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ خَاسِرِينَ We would have been with the khasirin. And this is a severe title. Allah says, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ And here, وَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Dhikr, but after all ibadat, Allah never says kathira, but with dhikr, Allah says kathira. What's the reason? I'll tell you this and then you'll understand what I'm saying. You are sleeping, I'm sleeping, he's sleeping, she's sleeping, everyone's sleeping. And everybody's sleep is different. Some people, they toss and turn, their eyes open. Some people, for example, you open the door, they hear something loud, or even if it's quiet, their eyes open. But some people, if you set five alarm clocks, even they go off, they can't wake up. Some people have three alarm clocks, one here on the right, one in front, one to the left. When this goes off, then, then you put snooze button, then snooze button, and still the eyes don't open and wake up. Three alarm clocks. In the same way, in the dunya, the person who's the ghafil in the world, their hal is the same. Some people, they wake up quickly, they react quickly, they do ten tasbih, dhikr, and their eyes open up, and they're fresh, alert. Alert. Oh wait, that's why I stated that everyone's basis is different. Some people, four alarm clocks, you said, do a thousand tasbihs, one hundred thousand recitation of Allah. Even then that person is immersed in the state of ghaflat and sins. Because Allah Ta'ala says there's one way to wake up. That a person, if he keeps on sinning, 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 he will be a ghafil, he will be ignorant and asleep. And as long as the sin is attached to your body, you are the ghafil. Allah says you will be written in my kitab as the ghafil, as the sinful person. So Allah Ta'ala says the success criteria is do so much dhikr, so much dhikr, that not one sin stays in your life, you remove all all the sins externally and internally. So Allah Ta'ala says that I will not tell you the number, the quantity. You will know yourself the number you need to do. And the quantity of dhikr should be that no sin should be removed in your life. 100,000, 20,000, 2 million, 3 million. As long as there are sins in your body, in your life, in your ruh, in your soul, keep on doing dhikr. That's why Allah Ta'ala says do dhikr on kathira for our benefit. Allah Ta'ala doesn't like setting numbers. Alhamdulillah, if there's a man who's very active, he does 10 tasbih and the sins are removed from his body, from his heart, alhamdulillah. And then after 10, then he does more tasbih, then his darajat will be elevated, the dhikr will elevate his rank and status. Subhanallah. So now, what is the criteria? That uh, now we'll come towards the conclusion of what we have discussed today. Okay, brothers? Now every human being, today our whole ummah, what is the hal that we are immersed and trapped in the sins? Sins are all around us. And what is the reason for sin? Negligence. Ghaflat. Sleep. 
We're ignorant. And as long as a person is asleep, he forgets Allah, doesn't look, think about Allah, doesn't know where is Allah, what is Allah said, that person is asleep. As long as we sin, what is sin? Allah Ta'ala's disobedience. And we don't obey and, and implement the orders of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As long as we live our lives like this, even if it's half an inch, that if Sharia says this is wrong, we have to leave that action. That's it. There's nothing in the dunya, no proof, no analysis, no justification. No. Allah said don't do this. After today, I will not do this action. That's it. And this is called leaving the sins. So this, when will we leave the sins? When we will end our ignorance. And the tariqah for ending the ignorance, Allah Ta'ala has explained, what is it? Dhikran, dhikran kathira. Abundance. Of, so to come out of the state of being a ghafil, we need to do dhikr in abundance and our eyes will open. And how much do we have to do dhikr? Kathiran, kathira, how much? That as long as we are alive and as long as the sins are still in our lives, physically and spiritually, we need to keep on doing dhikr. May Allah Ta'ala give me and you the tawfiq. The message is very beautiful. We need to have determination and courage. And we have two paths. Even today we decide that no, I'm going to stay the same. Those who listen and don't implement may not be, may not be. So we either decide that we will be in Jahannam hellfire and we're screaming and shrieking. Allah say, stop talking rubbish now. How dare you shriek? We say, Allah, Allah, please give us a one chance, one chance to go back to the world. And inshallah, Allah, we promise to you today that we will never do wrong again. Allah will say, stop talking rubbish and be gone from here. Be gone from here. That I know your nature, I will send you again and you will still sin in the world. Why? Because the first time you could not ask for forgiveness. The second time, how can I trust you? Allah will say, the same situation, the story will end. Allah Ta'ala says, I gave you the whole explanation and methodology. So either group one are those people who will be wretched and cursed and that time will come very soon and our faces may be burnt or we do tawbah today and start a new life but this deception I've told you that in parallel with sins and you have in parallel with sins you have worship this is total deceit misconception and deceit in your heart and mind that you've prostrated it then you sin you've prostrated it then you go to haram you prostrated it then you lie you prostrated it then you do fraud carry on doing that Allah says Rabbana zalamna anfusana you're doing zulm on your own self straight forward on your own self. Allah says, one path. Al-Mustaqim. Allah says, one path. I have one path. Not many. Not many variables. One path. Sirat Al-Mustaqim. That's it. Come onto that path. Straightforward point. Straightforward solution. Straightforward formula. Either we sin or we do the good deeds. We need to save ourselves from the sins. How do we save ourselves from the sins? Do dhikr Allah, remember Allah in abundance. Say we do dhikr in the morning, in the evening, with Allah's fadl, with Allah's favor, with Allah Ta'ala's control, with His favor. I sit and we sit. We are sins. We are so sinful. Allah allows us His karam, His mercy, His blessings. He's made us so much in love with dhikr so we can eliminate our sins. That forget about ajar, rabood. Don't do dhikr for rabood. And first do fikr that Allah... Let me save my life first and save myself from the consequence of sins. And forget about ajar, I'll get the wood after Allah has opened up His oceans of mercy. Look, but Allah Ta'ala opens the floodgates. The floodgates Allah Ta'ala has opened from morning till night. And alhamdulillah, the whole week, Allah Ta'ala has opened the floodgates all week. The go and wash yourself in the ocean, in the water. The bathrooms are open. Go and bathe and do ghusl. In today, in this day and age, it is essential every second to be in the dhikr of Allah. I tell you the reality. That that the afdal, the afdal reason, the afdal dhikr of Naqshbandi dhikr, the dhikr of Qalbi, learn this dhikr. Learn this dhikr. Don't do dhikr in the heart to become a wali wala, but rather to make the ghaflat, the negligence and sleepiness go far from you. What's the reason I tell you? That Allah, the, the nur of your rahmah is coming into my heart and my heart is doing Allah, Allah. Say it loudly. Do we do this knee always? Allah, your rahmah is coming into my heart and I'm doing your dhikr. Allah, Allah. What is sin? Sin is nothing. Nothing. Sin is such a light, light situation and condition. There's no power. There's no weight. That when a person leaves sins, he laughs. I used to do these actions. Amazing. How did I commit these sins? How did I do these wrong things? He'll laugh. The person who hasn't got a beard at the moment. I'll give you an example. When Allah Ta'ala's father and karam and blessings come, he leaves the sins and he keeps a beard, he laughs. Now how comes I didn't have a beard? What kind of human being was I that I didn't used to listen to Allah and his Rasul I didn't have a beard? Now you are sat here and I ask you a question. That uh, Qadi Sab here, take 10,000 and shave your beard and come in the morning. Will you take 10,000? Tell me the truth, will you? You'll say, take me 20,000 
I still won't listen to you. Nobody will listen to me. Why? Because if before you said someone here, hey, uh, take this money. Oh, after Hajj, I'll keep the bed. After Umrah, oh, my wife, she's unhappy. What can I do? There's bad situation at home. So many excuses. But when you start, when you leave the sin, Allahu Akbar, then in reality you come to the right path. When you come into the right path in light, you say, Allah, Allah is watching me. I'm seeing Allah. I can feel it. And how can I do this? And only that person who knows Allah, who's a friend with Allah, Allah is powerful. Allah is the Lord, He'll destroy me. The question doesn't rise that I go towards this sin. Doesn't matter what you give me. And we have to do dhikr to get to this point. We have to do dhikr of Allah. To get out of this misconception life, this life is a fraud, it is deceit. If our life is not in accordance with Quran and Hadith, then this is not life in the world, it's hellfire we're living in. Fire, the house is fire, the life is fire, that is fire of hell in our homes, in our families, that money is fire. That business is fire. Everything of ours is fire. We're stood in fire. We are displeasing Allah and we think we are living a beautiful, comfortable life full of tranquility. Can prosperity come? Can happiness come? Can success come? This is istidraj. This is a measure of miraj. It's a deception of shaitan, of the jinnat. They put a veil in front of our eyes that you are fine. Got a long life. Relax. That life is wretchedness. That home is wretchedness. On the bridge of Sirat. On the bridge of Sirat. I ask you, who will give us the water? Who? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and such a beautiful water of the pond of Kawthar is so vast, so vast, so spread. Who can tell us that you can imagine from here the pond of Kawthar that from where the water will be given to us to drink that the Prophet Muhammad sallam, will give us with his blessed hands? How much water is there that all of the heavens and the stars that are sprinkling, that are that are glowing? Sparkling in the heavens, there are so many glasses in the pond of Kothar on the banks. We will go, they imagine how many glasses that there are trillions of glasses from which we will drink. Then imagine how vast will be the pond of Kothar. The pond that look at you cannot even count the stars in the skies in the universe. So there'll be more than that glasses from which we'll drink. And the Prophet will want to give water to his ummah. And there'll be angels there saying, Get back, get back, get back, oh people. And the Prophet will say, Why are you telling them to get back? This is my ummah. They are Muslims. Why are you angels telling them to get back and get away from it? That why are you removing my ummah? That they believed in me and I'm giving them water. They've come here to drink the water. The angel will say, Allah's Nabi, O Prophet Muhammad, that these people with the ghafil, they're trying to come here. They're trying to enter into your ummah. They're not the ummah. They're those people who destroyed your deen. Who rejected your deen. They didn't pray salah. They didn't obey you. They didn't believe in you. They didn't know about halal, haram. They had nothing in their life. It was all deception and darkness. They used to cheat. Then Allah's Nabi said something. Is it? They were like this. Then Allah's Nabi said, Get them out of here. Learn at learn at richness. Get away from it. Allah's Nabi himself will say, Be gone with you. Be gone with you. We want this in the day of judgment. What else shall we tell each other to explain to each other? What will be our hashar? Our consequence? Shafi'ul Muslimin, Rahmatul Amin, and we will lose from his water, his blessedness, his mercy. He will say that I used to see every Thursday your deeds were presented to me. You were living life like a gangster. A criminal, today is Thursday night, that Saturday, Sunday, then Monday will come again, then Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday will come again. After every three days our deeds are presented, tell me now, ask a question, a unique question. That can I think, or can you think, or can we think, a few seconds here, let's be honest with each other. Can you or me think that due to me, due to my life and my sins, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam will feel pain? That due to my deeds, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam receives pain and his anxiety. And that if my deeds are presented today, the angels say, Allah's Rasulullah, he rejected your sunnah, he did this sin, he did this bad action, he harmed another person. Will Prophet Wasallam not feel pain? He will. So let's see the Quran. The Allah Ta'ala says, the person who gives pain to my Nabi, that, that verse, if you know that verse of the Quran, that those people who give pain, and, and issues to my Nabi, then imagine what the hashar will be, and where we are stuck today in this deception and darkness. And today we will wander around in the world without parda, and our faces are totally full of wretchedness. We say, where is it written? Where is the proof? No, haya is on the eyes, there is no parda, haya is not on the, uh, it's on the heart. Do what you want and live the life of drama, but understand your deeds are presented every Monday and Thursday to the Prophet Muhammad And what pain we are giving to him, oh woman! What pain you are giving to the Prophet Wasallam? That we say we love him when he sees us, that my ummah, a woman from my ummah, and she is immodest, and she's naked, and she's showing herself to be like this, this is her, her hal. Allahu Akbar. Then imagine how much pain is given to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah has announced in the Quran that those people who give pain to my Nabi, then the hashar in the day of judgment will be so severe. Severe. 
So I don't know what's happened, my friends. Let's change. Let's change, my friends. Let's improve. Let's improve. May Allah Ta'ala give us the tawfiq. Otherwise, Allah Ta'ala's adab is very severe, very severe. That all this drama and game will finish within seconds. The whole world, look at it. All of this drama will end with this. We think this is this and I want progression, advancement and money and wealth and profit. Everything will be made clear. Water and milk will be separated and we'll see how much we're implementing Allah Ta'ala's ahkams and how much fraud we're living in our life. And always on Thursday night and on Monday. Monday and Thursday, be ready that my deeds are being presented to the Prophet Muhammad Today from morning till night, what have I done? What have I done? That's why we have to do kasrat. Kathiran istighfar. Now the Prophet Muhammad must be happy that today we do tawbah, we repent, we start doing dhikr of Allah, we go to a shaykh and we become bayah, we pledge allegiance and we do the dhikr. And today then my deeds on the night of Jummah are presented to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Tell me what enjoyment that person will receive, what enjoyment. So do we do tawbah? Do we repent? Proper tawbah? Shall we recite the kalam of tawbah? Then recite. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu, ashadu an la ilaha illallahu, wa ashadu. أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. We do this with an honest heart, Tawbah. Remember this. أستغفر الله. أستغفر الله. أستغفر الله تعالى. ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه. آمين. 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 رب العالمين. Allah Ta'ala, may He uh, forgive our sins, my sins and your sins. Forgive all of our sins, let's make a niyyah. We will try our best that from tomorrow our life is improved. We'll pray five times salah properly. We will improve our lifestyle. Our parents will be in accordance to the sunnah, our face and our life and our everything. We will try our best and we will save ourselves from haram and implement halal. That's it. Five times salah. Nothing else. No one's saying to you pray tahajjud, ishraq, sunrise, do this, do that. Nothing. Allah says five times salah. Pray and make your rizq halal. Then I will make you my friend. My friend. That's it. Totally. Nothing else. No drama. Nothing else. Five times salah. And make your life halal. And obey, imitate the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Eating, drinking, standing, sitting, make your niyam. Is in accordance to the sunnah of Rasulullah and With the fadl of Allah, five times salah in jama'ah. Congregation, that's it. End of story. And then if you get any more time to do extra, recite Quran, with recitation, that's it. This is the main thing. The five times Allah calls us. Five times the missed call comes from Allah. Soon as we see the missed call, run to Allah. And return the call when your friend gives you a miscall. Oh, miscall. And you, you call him back. Or you send a message. And so this is the call. A miscall. Allah Zazan. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. This is a miscall. Soon as the miscall comes, you see Allah's call. Then run to Allah. Allah, you call me. Allah, what is it? What is it, Allah? And you run to Allah. Turn to Allah. Allah, what's happened? Allah, you call him. You leave all your job, your occupations. One thing. And the second thing is make your life totally in accordance to the sunnah. No feeling ashamed. No running. No embarrassment. No hesitation. Totally, the sunnah of Rasulullah SAW I implement and no form of hesitation should be that this is my iman, such a great Nabi and I'm imitating him and I'm feeling embarrassed. What kind of iman is this that I've, what kind of life is this? Is this the basis of my life? That such a great Nabi, such a great Prophet, the greatest Prophet, Allah Ta'ala has given us the tawfiq that we are in his ummah and we are able to imitate him. And are we capable of imitating him? Are we? Tell me. Tell me. So with love and muhabbat, imitate the Prophet Muhammad SAW. Imitate him. Imitate him.